in all patients as a different hospitalization. And for these four categories, you can choose in between for your patient. Usually, you have different sizes. Patricia, just to, to, to give them a break, and I, I, I'd like to give them the chance to ask you one of the questions and continue. Choose so two questions, please. You have questions, please, to the sector of the presentation. Because it is very interesting. Okay? Any question? Yes, please. Merci, merci professeur pour la présentation. Euh, ma question se résume sur le choix du filtre dialyseur. Euh, par rapport au choix, euh, on a remarqué qu'il y, y a beaucoup d'éléments à contrôler. Surtout, il y a des, des dialyseurs où on remarque que ça, ça coagule vite. Il y a des dialyseurs où les fumiers, au début, quand ils préparent la machine, il y a l'air qui, qui part, qui, qui arrive à éliminer l'air dans le circuit à moment, alors qu'il y a des dialyseurs où ils prennent du temps pour, pour, pour éliminer l'air dans le circuit. Et je voudrais avoir une idée euh, par rapport au choix, comment faire pour éviter ces gens, surtout les, les temps de, de fumer père pour mettre le, le, le système en marche par rapport à l'élimination de l'air dans le circuit et aussi pour, le, pour la population, comment je pouvais choisir. Donc, mais ça va. Thank you very much, and we perfectly agree for your, uh, your question. What I mean here is the filter is the cornerstone of an efficient lens. So, you have a four partitions here to choose between the correct patient for a correct filter. So if we can have, what is the ideal filter? What is the ideal filter? You should have better flux to remove toxins, which is the high flux usually, and better material, like polysulfur or polyester something, as well better sterilization. If you go through here, and you, you have a choice between radiation or steam sterilization, I perfectly agree that steam is the most less chromogenic and the less uh, anticoagulants required and less immune reaction. So if you have a choice to choose a filter, I'll choose a filter between for adults, for example 1.3 to 1.8 square meter, which is high flux membrane and sensitive and in steam sterilization. Otherwise if you are using for example heat of filters or gamma sterilized or beta radiation filter, you have a lot of clotting caskets. So I prefer here just to do one, two, three of the correct or the ideal filter, which is 1.3 to 1.8, high flux, sensitive membranes, and in steam sterilization. Just I want to add a sentence. I agree with Professor Isham that the laser equal dialysis because this is the, as we say, artificial kidney is in the dialyzer. So this is why during the training on Tuesday, we'll bring to you different types of dialyzers and to present the different criteria of dialyzers. Because it's not the task of Sosha today. He is looking at the dialysis unit uh, as the panoramic view, not detailed view for each components of the dialysis. So its promise will go through the analyzer in details. Any, any other question? Any question? Yes, please. Thank you for the presentation. My question is uh, um, on the use of reusable uh, filters. So, can you translate to Professor Hisham in Arabic? On the choice of filters, I've seen some centers where they use reusable. Yeah, we 
some countries, yes, and in particular the Far East, yes. Yes. Fast. Oh, what is Latin America as Yes. What is the change on the line? How is the European and the Russians and everybody in the US? I don't like. I don't like reusing Russia because more or less cost of filter is around seven, seven lakhs and eight euro for the USD. Yeah. For the whole cost is not that uh, much part. But if you are re reusing filter, you have a lot of problems. I don't recommend that to do. To, to be cost effective, don't go for reuse. And here we abandon the reuse all through the, the our career since a since long time, since Samir, more than 30 years or 40 years now in the analysis. So we abandon reuse because we are not sure of the infection process. Yeah, sure. And each disinfection. Uh, decreases the adequacy of the filter, so we don't like it. And uh, uh, especially the cost of the laser after the availability of the laser everywhere, it is uh, it is uh, very nice to go without. Yeah, the there is almost uh, a, lot, a lot of outbreaks of infection of types transmission HIV and as well. And we're looking for the cost. It is not a cost effect. The last question. Thank you very much for question. And my question is about using a machine. You said one machine should serve at least six patients a day, and we are doing that for the country. So what I want to know is what we are to do in between the sessions. Are we to raise any machine or to use this effective machine for the patient? Yes. That's what I want. Yes. And usually the plan of our practice is to control the number of patients that come in but I will give you a very fast track here, this infection. In between patients, you can use just breathing and heat disinfection, and by the end of the day, you can use chemical uh, disinfection according to the manufacturing process of the immunization supply. So, in between patients, you have to do internally heat disinfection. Finally, by the end of the day, we do chemical disinfection, and you should take very important issue is the surfaces, the outer surface of the machine is important, but much more important than the internal circuit because it has a lot of blood and bacteria and viruses. So we have to do cleaning regularly between jets to remove any other bacteria or virus that will be on the surface of the machine. machine. That's an important more than in the chemical disinfection by the end of the day. So you can do that if we get disinfection for 20 minutes and as well, uh, by the end of the day, you do chemical disinfection, and between patients, you have to do just externally uh, disinfecting with the hemolytic machine, usually by uh, sodium hydrochloride. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, like. Thank you very much. Let's pull up the uh, uh, reusable uh, oh, cost effectiveness. If you are thinking about the oh, utilization of the patient center, the same diameter is used for that testing. The same diameter is used for that testing. What is it? What is it? What is it? So you, you, are challenging. Challenging. You, are doing cross. you are challenging the dogma of uh, reuse. Yes. You, yes. you agree about use. Yeah, use. Yeah. Uh, use. It's okay. From scientific point of view and from academic point of view, if you have the good facilities yeah. and safety control and the quality control, how to do proper disinfection to allow the dialyzer to be reused, it's fine. I cannot say it is non scientific at all. But here in this center, in this country, the price of dialyzer is within our hand. And I think if we think, if we consider doing the reuse, the reuse will uh, take money even more than the factor. So this is the, the way. So if the, if you, if the factors are very priced, uh, very uh, precious, and the costly, and you have well done facilities for disinfection, but you should know that 
the, the reuse is not forever. After a couple of uh, reuse, the filter will be lost, the adequacy will be lost. So you should have the facilities to monitor the data adequacy, quality control of disinfection to allow reuse. So it's a big headache. At the end of the day, we don't like it. Dr. Shem, it's better to go and to continue your, your very nice, excellent presentation. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I, I, I see that I've exceeded my time, so I have no, to... No, no, no problem. I have to hurry up to my slide because... No, no, no the, problem. Po the post here will just... Uh, Please, not to hurry. Oh. See, see, no, see, no, no, wait, wait. No, okay. no. Okay. Please, okay. just a second. Okay, uh, Please, I will continue. Yes, Please, not to hurry because this is the fundamental. Uh, to have the well-established, uh, the standard, world-class dance unit. Even in our center, we don't have all that Professor Shem mentioned. And I am sure that in Ain Shams University, they have no, all these facilities. But it is better to know the world-class that, that is... System. It's a yes. system. It's a system you can have 70%, 80%, 90%. Yes as you can see from the quality control. And if you don't have the facilities, we should, if, to learn the gap, to know the gap, it is the one of the education uh, objectives of this course. Okay, please proceed, Professor Shah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. What on your mind, the translator? Yeah, yeah. Become the team after yeah, yeah. So, I, be slow. I, I can <laughs> have the gap, I can understand the gap, because I, I got use it as well for the okay. So. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I, I will learn too much of that. So, I will not be in a hurry. I would like to make assurance. Shut the microphone so I have to complete in the first two. I don't like stopping anything of my talk, but I have to be social in the time as well. So, this is the uh, typical brochure or catalog you have received for each dialyzer. You can find that different performance measurements for toxins, ultra filtration capacity, as well for uh, uh, surface filter and <coughs> other aspects of the filter. You have to know that this is the manufacturing data that is usually on aqua solution, so it is higher than what you can get from your patient by 20%. So this is the manufacturer you can review and you can devise uh, each device for each device by the form. So, your high flux membrane, it's your choice, but the Japanese use very high flux membranes, removing many of the urethic toxins, and this is called the high flux or super flux category, removing inflammatory reactions as well as removing all the urethic toxins. And if you look here, you can have some spec for each filter what could be removed and what could be retained in the patient. And here is what's called the pool diameter, which is involved inside the membrane and the toxin path through, and it is identified in majority of the dialyzers by their spec. And you should have also membrane, which is no thrombogenicity, not clotting, in particular, wall thickness and internal diameter. You can see here internal diameter of the fiber. It is in uh, micrometers. Good quality, no blood stagnation, less dropping. Inner membrane. And you can choose between all these kinds, between filters, and what molecule should be removed. In particular, the hemodialysis. The perfect one is between 3,000 and 4,500 because after that you will have an albumin loss during the answer, and this may be nutritional burden on the patient. So if your patient cannot have a nutritional support, please don't go above 3,000 to from low flux of answer to 30,000 uh, in diameter. And this is a schematic, a schematic presentation, how you can remove, you can remove small toxins, very efficient are all filters, but when going to high flux, you need to remove much of the middle molecule toxins, bigger like uh, dialysis uh, related amyloidosis and the beta-2 microglobulin and other cytokines, 
but still have a majority of patients will have uremic toxins with protein bound and difficult to be removed. So in general, you remove the small molecules and the middle molecules in patient molecules. And if you are going to do HDF, I will not talk about HDF because it's very specific, but you need a very good vascular axis, you need a very quite high vascular axis, otherwise not to proceed for this specific hemodialysis surgery. And if you are going to do high flux dialysis in our university and HDF, you have uh, promote removal 82% of the middle molecules like beta globulin with efficient dialysis and session. And we have new publications in here for the HDF as well as for others. And if you look here for uh, requirements for HDF, number one for requirement is a vascular axis. So HDF is a very specific country-wise, not, not more than 20% of patients, and it is very expensive. And it's not sure that it will be beneficial for all patients, selected patients. But if you don't have a good vascular axis, you will not go through hemodialysis filtration therapy. And for sure, if you need that, you need a two endotoxin filter because you need a sterile dialysate to be substitution. So that just to have a, a highlight here, there is a therapeutic challenge calling HDF. We don't have here in Egypt much more uh, HDF as well in Europe, for example, Sweden, uh, Germany, Britain, and the other is uh, in the range of very small amount in Germany, 13%, while uh, richer at up to 50%. And this is the important. What is important here? Who of your patient should have an advanced hemodialysis like HDF? The patient with dialysis, the related amyloidosis, patient with polyneuropathy, hemodynamic instability. Long dialysis, more than five to ten years, patient with heart failure, diabetes, and the everything may have some advances of hemodiafiltration. And if you look here for hemodiafiltration and others, you can find that dialysis related amyloidosis, which is a common complication, is not only related to retention but also related to inflammatory reaction during hemodialysis. And this ends my tendering and uh, 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 requesting for uh, disposals and going rapidly for the costs and budget. We can agree together that cost is important because reducing cost with optimal quality can have more budget for more incoming patients. So we have to do good quality and lower cost. And if you improve the outcome, you will have saved money and more healthcare service for more patients. So it's a cost, it does not mean that you have a low quality, but the target is to have a high quality and lower cost of the therapy. And if you look here, you can have the optimum quality with the lower cost, and you can reduce even the cost by some technical uh, advices and some technical decision, but if you look for uh, uh, healthcare costs in chronic kidney disease and the renal replacement therapy, it's variable from country to country, up to 60,000 USD per year annually in some centers and in other more rich, uh, 80,000 per year. And overall cost lies in hemodialysis and reducing the cost of chronic kidney disease while delivering the quality, meaning that you need a preventive strategy. So you cannot say that I will lower the quality of your dialysis and lower cost, nothing. And you cannot say that I will put, I give a good quality of your dialysis and lower cost, nothing. You have to go for a preventive strategy. Because a lot of patients is incoming for your dialysis. If you start with 100 patients, with a couple of years, this will be 500 patients. So we have to do a preventive strategy, either primary prevention, which is a control manipulation, health care, advice, no smoking, control of obesity, lifestyle, environmental factor, heavy metals, contamination, pollutions, or secondary prevention, screening patient first, 
for diabetes control and hypertension, hyperlipidemics, as well for controlling with your therapy with renal replacement therapy. If you have a diabetes program, you can find here that for different categories, transplantation has the least cost and the excess of quality of life. So, number one, go to transplantation available program with the highest quality of life as well as your food. If not available, you can go to in central hemodialysis or home dialysis. Home dialysis is not so common in Egypt, but it's common in USA and other countries, which means that patient education and have his own hemodialysis machines and decreasing cost by depleting the manpower fee and other costs. But if you don't have, you so you don't have a choice either to do transplantation or in center or hospital hemodialysis. Regarding, I don't know your countries uh, as well, but I think here is some of the prevalence of hemodialysis. For example, some of the Middle East is 700, uh, 700 per million, and some in South Africa is low. In Thailand, Taiwan is very high. This is a prevalent and is growing number of patients requiring that. So, first program, if you don't have a hemodialysis center, you do a very efficient to do a very efficient preventive extraction. And again, this is a cost for dialysis as well as a cost for medication associated with patients on dialysis. The majority has the cost of dialysis syrup. Now we can remove that so we can go for dialysis transplantation or it's better to have a good preventive program for patients with chronic kidney disease. And preventive strategy will for sure decrease the cost on the long term budgets and decreasing the burden of the all the Medicare as well for the governmental payment for each individual patient requiring hemodialysis. Tax for budgets, this is the course, for course uh, in, in rich countries. I think in, uh, we are one, one tenth of this uh, cost in Egypt, but it's uh, ranging from 40 to 80,000 with different countries. And financial re embarrassment issue has been identified as the most important non medical factors in the analysis modality selection and the quality. If you pay much, usually you have an advantage to have a good or better game dialysis. For costs, this is the four categories of costs during the sessions, during dialysis, which is the direct medical cost, salaries, disposables, capital costs of equipment, machines, medications, hospitalization. And we have direct non-medical costs like buildings, electricity, taxes, facility utilities, and overhead. We have tangible or minority, which is cost associated with drugs for pain, suffering, and impairment. And as well, we have a great cost for a family, which is the entire cost for productivity loss. Not working, patient not working, and social burden, as well as family, who is accompanying the patient three times per week. So this is the four items of cost of hemodialysis. We are focusing usually on the direct medical cost, but there is as well any cost that to be put in the budget. The encouragement, which uh, uh, will have your money, this is example from seven countries, European countries, and Canada, and USA, you can find the difference, but it's uh, in the range of uh, 700 USD per week. France, UK, and this is the target 
for some medications used. For example, if you are using resistive medications, some countries are paying for that, and some countries are not paying for that during of the budget of people that are paid by other Medicare or insurance. And this is a quality, so uh, really passive adjustment for alternative non-standard <coughs> strategies or specific patient group. If you are using special high flux in brain, you will not pay for that. If you are using online hemodyne filtration, you will not pay for that the majority of countries. So it is a standard if you are using vaccination. Some patients with HIV or hepatitis C, some countries pay more or not. It depends on each country and local regulation. But in general, in all countries, developed countries, they are paying for the service of hemodynamics. They are paying for that. And the payment depends on what's called GDP or the gross uh, domestic product, which is the income of the population on such a country. We are doing enough here to Egypt to have a such a passing rate as well in uh, our neighbors and present in Africa. So we have to do uh, more dialysis with lower embarrassment. And the embarrassment rate here is usually come from the fee of doctors and nurses, lower than in developed countries. So going uh, rapidly for the clinical performance. And uh, uh, there is a difference between clinical performance guide and clinical performance measurements. What is that? You have a guidelines, but you don't know how percent of the guidelines you can do in your center. This is called clinical performance measurements or KPIs, key performance indicators. So you have guidelines, what in the book, if you have in the internet, but to implement such guidelines in your center and to score that, you need a clinical performance indicators or a clinical performance measurement. And that's the difference between clinical practice.